Greetings everyone, this is Lodric and uh, this is our game War in the Pacific Advanced Edition in the match against Dojo. And today we will check and see what happens in turn number 32. It means starts at the 7th February and 8th February 1942. At the end uh, of the combat, uh, yeah, results I w can maybe also explain a little about uh, the destroyer question of the Japanese Navy because there are some upgrade stuff, uh, different options how to upgrade some destroyers, and uh, I can explain why I do what, but this is at the end of the turn. Because I get also the feedback that sometimes only the com combat animation will not maybe explain much of the game. It's show only what I did. Uh, but uh, maybe there's uh, information missing why. But here you can see, like last time, we still clean the mines. <coughs> so I think this is already turn number three. And uh, because there are 600, 700 mines. <coughs> and every minesweeper can maybe clean, I don't know, maybe 10 or 20 mines, maybe maximum 30 mines per day. So you need a lot of minesweepers for this operation. And this is uh, west of Perth, so I sent some submarines here <coughs> to interdict uh, the southern part uh, of cargo shipping. It's a uh, <coughs> oi, oi, oi. It's a and for the allies it's a possible more or less uh, always to move the cargo lines up and down uh, but for the west coast of Australia you have normally this uh, Perth and Perth I think is a classic and Albany and what is here Esperanza but I think this is not really so much useful um, but uh, these uh, three main ports are here for yeah, to unload the cargo shipping and uh, um, by, by standard uh, setup I think the cargo ships come in a line here zack. this means you can normally have here three four um, submarines independently and then there's a high chance that you one or two of the submarines will intercept this cargo shipping uh, for the ally player of course it is possible to first bring all cargo here from source and then go up <coughs> so you will normally avoid all submarines here and uh, it is really not that I really intercept a lot of cargo here so uh, I don't know if Dojo always uh, change the uh, shipping line of his cargo. I also try to change them, my submarines. Uh, sometimes it's successful, but just so so. So nothing else. More or less the submarines uh, between California and Pearl Harbor was completely inactive for I don't know how long time. So uh, I try to find uh, Dojo's shipping lines but it's very hard because I have also no scout information, it's guessing. So this is uh, one of my first uh, smaller navy invasion operations this is a base is very removed there's no other way to uh, yeah. there's no road in the swamps so if you want to try to walk here it needs a long time so you better really do an invasion operation what i do here now so i take this base because there's not much resistance and uh, this all this coastline is not much defended and uh I think uh, Medan have a lot of oil, 
The others are only nice to have. The bang is okay because you can have your scout planes to control the street of uh, Malaka. And uh, this is simply only a preparation. It's not a big attack on Palenberg. Uh, because I still must rest and we... Uh, my units are still a little tired from the fighting of Singapore. And I still lack the cargo shipping to transport a lot of units. I don't want ship here small numbers of units. I want to try to at least always have one regiment or even more in one attempt. And this means you must have a shipping capacity of 10,000, 12,000, 15,000 and even more for troops and cargo. So you need a big task force because uh, there's still an uh, airbase in Palmbang and uh, also in Java. And uh, we, I also try to riddle down a little more of uh, Dojo's uh, air force in this Dutch bases. It's, uh, it's really maybe a little slow, I would also say. Normally you can push this faster. Uh, but it's simply my, my game style. I play it safe, but also offensive, without reckless. And uh, it's not perfect, but the question is, what is perfect? Uh, we can discuss this long time. And for me, it is more or less take everything faster than in reality but uh, with and try not to lose anything okay we still try to clean here the mines and after we clean the mines of Batan we still have to clean the mines of Manila but we have the time because our armies are here still in Batan and they need two three turns to arrive in Manila they also need two three turns to rest I simply don't want rest in Batan I want rest in Manila they are more easy supplies to uh, bring back the strength of the units to change the disabled units to active units So we can see that the dojo have some scout planes also still here around. Uh, it's a uh, this whole Philippine operation and also this Indochina operation is without any carrier support. I really have my two carrier fleets uh, focused on the first carrier fleet, the main carrier fleet is uh, on Ragul. So. Normally to make sure that Dojo don't try to intercept anything. Only let him know they are the heavy carriers and they are battleships. So if one if Dojo won't fight in Rabul or around Port Mosby or this area whole area, then he must come big and he must risk with everything. At the same time I have a, I try to have a strong air base in Rabul. So that, and I will not really, not really go out of this mm, strike range of Rabul with my carrier fleet. Means uh, if we try to attack my carriers, I have at least some backup air cover in Rabul. It's it simply it make it more risky for Dojo if he want interfere with my operations in this British uh, or oh, no British island or uh, Rabul area, Port Moresby area, uh, Shortlands, Tulagi. So this is the standard uh, bombardment. And now I uh, I maybe risk a little much. I get some scout information, but of course, uh, my scout informations are always 
uh, from the day before so because I scout and see how many airplanes was in Rangoon the day before and then Dojo makes his turn so a Dojo I think because now we have a hurricane so there are more fighters so in the last turn I say I make the bombardment strike on Rangoon and at the same time Dojo send his hurricanes maybe from somewhere else to Rangoon so because this is a we go game means it is it's not a I go first and then he goes second it is we go so I do my turn first my setup but it's the same then after this to go dojo will do his turn but uh, the movement and the results the activity is in a combination out of both turns so this is a we go and this is uh, of course now we have a situation that uh, Jojo just reinforced the base and I thought okay I I get him and uh, all his uh, fighters are more or less uh, destroyed or disabled or damaged and I can uh, try to attack with my bomber force and uh, if we only see the flying tigers I would say it was perfect because two three flying tigers this will not stop me. My Oscars can take care of them. But if there are now 14 Hurricane Trap A, it's only the A edition, but uh, even the A edition have a lot of firepower. And if you remember that the Sallys, they simply, there's no armor, the machine guns, the defense fire is nothing. And this is why we're losing now here a lot of uh, bomber formations. Uh, you see one hit and always normally a kill this bombers they cannot handle this stuff this is also the reason why I normally not so eager to use any kind of light bombers or medium bombers of the Japanese army to strike the British now because I know if this happens I will lose my bomber for sure normally if you want to avoid this, you better really say I don't use much bomber strikes because these bombers are not built for this kind of warfare. These bombers are really only have efficiency, I would say, if you dominate the sky. So you must make sure that you dominate the sky, then you can use these light bombers, medium bombers of the Japanese army. Or, and this is normally where I won't go for, is you need this Helen 2A, not the original 1A, I think it's a 2A, the second edition. The first edition have only a lot of guns, yeah, because these airplanes have nearly no guns. The Helen have already a lot of guns, but still no armor. So with the Helen 2A, you get armor. In the armor is a big change if the enemy uh, interceptor have only light machine guns then you will do nearly no damage more against the bomber if the enemy interceptor have heavy machine guns yeah he will make damage but uh, he still must hit much more often so that was uh, of course now a tactical defeat I would say it is a tactical defeat because we lost this airplanes it is also a strategic defeat because from the strategic point of view I, I hoped that we can now shut down the airfield of Rangoon and keep it closed. If we attack every turn again and again is and Dojo's engineers try to fix the airport and we bomb the airport. Because last time we make a strike or, or the turn before and we damage the airplane. Normally you must continuously attack. But you must really attack every time, every turn, because the repair in Rangoon will start. But this will burn the uh, normally the supplies in Rangoon, so that you must attack every time. Yes, you will lose always some airplanes, but you can make sure that the airport of Rangoon is heavily damaged. Dojo normally must use a lot of supplies to repair, and this will burn simply su uh, supplies. And this makes the situation of Rangoon 
at all more complicated to maintenance for a dojo. That was the plan, but uh, now this happens, that uh, means uh, more or less I start back at zero because now I lost a lot of bombers and there are so many fighters and means normally the, our attack was far too less to really destroy here anything. So the airport is more or less back online maybe next turn and uh, now he have uh, hurricanes and hurricanes are one to one against the Oscar, the maximum what you can get is kill ratio one to one. Uh, but I would say it's even more terrible. This is a limitation also of the Oscar. Even with the best pilots, I think you cannot get more than a one to one. And remember, we fight in the air of Rangoon, so if we have, if our airplane is destroyed, then for sure our pilot is also lost. And if Dojo's airframe is maybe destroyed, he still has maybe a 50-50 chance to get his pilot still alive out. Uh, yeah, but... Uh, like I said before... War is no game. But in this game, in this kind of uh, game, war game, it is... Uh, it will not be always perfect. And we just saw that our Oscar, if we fight against the Flying Tigers, we still can do something. Now our uh, intercept or our fighters have the sweep option. This was also now, of course, uh, a failure of the commander, I would say. Maybe the air HQ make a mistake, you can say. Because normally this uh, sweep fighters must come first and reduce the enemy activity so if our fighters come first and get rid of half of the enemy fighters then our bomber formation maybe not suffer so much uh, but you can also not do much more you can only say they are all in the same base they all belong to the air, same um, air HQ and you can make sure that the airport have enough uh, aviation support and is not overstacked and if you did this all, and this I did, then you, d you did everything what is possible. But even with the best circumstance, and even if you set everything perfect, it is still possible that something gets wrong because it's complex. And the game also simulates this, that even if you did everything right, there is some small guy in the second line of uh, resp responsibility and he make a mistake with, and then this happens that uh, the bombers arrive first and uh, yeah, you must live with it I mean this will not really stop me from anything it was only the wish from my side and hope that I can close the airport of Rangoon and that normally that we still dominate this and then Dojo have to pull out of Rangoon and maybe bring his air force somewhere else. And, and now we have a little more balanced situation. If we do this, intercepting here and uh, fighting, we kill each other one to one maybe and I lower down his air force, he lower down my air force. Tja. This is also still the 2A. I think later, no, because the difference between, I think later the dojo also gets the 2B. And I think, uh, if I remember right, the 2A have 6 machine guns or 8. And the 2B have, I think, 12 machine guns. They are all light machine guns. And this is... Uh, if you have 6, 8 or even 12 of these light machine guns. The, the point is you have so many of them. Even if every one's machine gun have only a, they make a little damage and have not uh, a high accurate level. Or, it means... The chance that the pilot will hit with one of these machine guns is very low. 
and the damage he will do is small but if you have 12 of them then uh, each time you, you will always automatically hit much more easily more often <coughs> and uh, this uh, Oscars is also they have no armor and they have no hit points so this is a terrible competition and at the same time the hurricanes have also armor so even if I hit with my Oscars the hurricane often I only damage the airplane but not destroy the airplane uh, so the Japanese have really a disadvantage from the start already in this campaign the Japanese player must simply must make sure that he really only have this disadvantage uh, that you cannot change the airplane and before May of 42 you also have no other option because they have only this Oscar and you have the zero and the zero you can yeah I will maybe bring here soon some zero fighters to have more punching power but uh, then you still have only a limited numbers of air squadrons of this Oscars and of the zeros and uh, the zeros normally have the range this is important stuff zeros are long range fighters and here we have now a short range or yeah, standard range engagement so the Oscars can do this normally and uh, so I need the zero sum at some other position. Uh, so in May we can get this Tojo and then we can maybe turn this more easy. But if you play the Japanese you must make sure that your pilots have no fatigue problem, that your airport is big enough, you have the air HQ there and uh, you can see here now it's, I don't know, 2 to 2 is okay. Uh, you have everything okay and well and you have no other problem so that your only problem is that your Oscar is an Oscar but this you cannot change and you can only hope to get this Tojo and then you maybe change to Tojo but the Tojo is a really is a range of big problem the Oscar can at least operate up to a range of seven eight if you give him drop tanks and Tojo I think is only five so the range is even more short so then you will have other problems ah it's all not easy I mean uh, if I have a wish free I would say give me Fokka with 190 and uh, I will win this air war in two months uh, but uh, there is no option for this From my point of view, uh, is a BF uh, or the May 109 or the Fokker Wolf 190. I always go with the Fokker Wolf 190. It's a much more tough airplane, more easy to fly. Uh, the same punching power. It's. Uh, I think it was still a mistake to really produce a uh, May 109 after 1942, because there was no really development more left. The Fokker Wolf 190 was for sure a much more superb uh, airplane. But it was not a high altitude fighter. Uh, that's for sure. But for this specific area it would be perfect. But anyway, this is Pacific War, not the European War. Here we can kill some more 1i16. But this has no big impact. <coughs> and our Oscar still try to whittle down these uh, hurricanes. I also want to point out, it's not now important. I think I will later also say it in my monthly uh, episode in 1st of March 
uh, that the Japanese at 1st of March the Japanese get uh, the first set of uh, radar so far uh, uh, included February of 42 you don't the Japanese don't have radar or land-based radar I would say so in 1st of March the Japanese industry will try or uh, will produce land-based radar sets and uh, I can show this maybe also later uh, you simply must make sure that you get this radar units normally they are often base units or anti-aircraft units in every airbase where you have bomber and fighter uh, located simply this radar will normally make sure that if there is an airstrike like now we always make the airstrike on Rangoon and Rangoon there is air radar because oh, at the beginning or at the end of the battle we always see radar uh, airstrike detected by radar and then uh, the interceptors have more reaction time so you get more of your interceptors already in high, high altitude to intercept the enemy airstrike. If this is always good is the other question because if there is maybe 100 fighters coming and you have a dozen maybe you don't want even that your one dozen airplanes go up. But here we can see the rate is detected 39 miles and then this means you have 30 minutes reaction time. And this will normally this go at the end. At the end, uh, how if you earlier detect the strike, this will normally help your fighters later to be in a better position, but not more. It will not give you additional uh, attack value or like this. But it it will help you with bring your numbers up. This is again this rough terrain and I would simply say it's a uh, weather, of course it's bad weather, you can see the big cloud. Heavy raining will not help in this, but I think more important is this rough terrain. I really, I realize in clear terrain you can really damage something, but in mountains it's at least 50% less, maybe even more handicapped. And you can see, I really try to scout and scout and scout, simply to later have, if the turn is over, to have uh, more information on the map. I, you can normally also read this operational manual, every turn you get this, uh, all the sightings written down, but uh, the, the problem is there's a, this game is a little older, normally they write down, I see something at this position. But you cannot click the text and then automatically jump to the position. You only get this, this, uh, this hex numbers. Like here, the hex number 8053. Okay, this is hex 8053. But if you have a long text with many, many information, then you must write it all down with, with pen and paper or make screenshots. You can do this, of course, but uh, if I make a turn, I finish a turn in two hours normally. Not much more. Two or three hours I need to finish my whole turn. And I, if I won't make it in two or three hours one turn, then I cannot check all of this. So I really only check the map and what I see. This is maybe not perfect, but I simply... 
I'm not so hardcore. This is the next level of hardcore. Maybe you can ask Dojo how he do it. If he really check every thing and how much time he need to make one turn. But I focus for this. Normally Dojo send me the turn and then I sit then I download the file, then I check the replay first, then I think about what happened and after one or two hours I will start my turn and then I focus for this two hours and then I finish my turn and send it back to Dojo. It is also that of course the first months of the war, maybe also yeah, the first five, six uh, weeks, you have still to organize a lot of logistic stuff with the Japanese. And uh, the first turns needs much more time, that is for sure. The first week of the war, maybe you need always four or five hours to make a turn. But I think after one month you can cut it down to two hours, three hours. It's also a little of course related how seriously you want to play this and how strong is your opponent and yeah and if you have the eager or wish really to win or if you only want to have some fun and learn some experience and you also will say ah I don't care the garrison I don't want to optimize this and I don't must make try uh, pilot training and all this stuff you can cut this down and make it very simple and save a lot of time. But of course, then you cannot later complain and cry. Okay, this is some smaller invasion fleet uh, from Buna. There is a... Uh, normally, if you see this uh, Salomon Sea... Uh, there are three or four important bases. Normally, if the Rabul is the most important base. Lay is the second most important base for the airbase normally both can be I think both can be a seven airbase Buna is already also a good airbase and sports it's I think equal to Port Moresby the I think the possibility and the, yeah is the potential from both bases are equal and they only even have this different location source and north and uh, original the Japanese they took also this they make a big airbase here in Lei, Rabul and they also invade here in Buna and uh, from logistic point the problem is that here is high mountains and there is no way so this is really heavy jungle and in reality you will suffer 90% of your losses will be by sickness and disease if you try to pass these mountains in this game it is not so terrible, so you can normally do it, but you lose a lot of time. So most players they still try, and I also will do this, I make the classic invasion. The Japanese try this at, I don't know, the beginning of May, 2nd, 3rd of May, something like this, or 5th of May. This The first week of May, there was this battle of the Coral, Coral Sea. And... Uh, because the Japanese also tries to bring here this invasion fleet and then the American intercept this with radio transmission and uh, they know that the Japanese are coming and so they make uh, this trap and then he had this carrier battle. And after this the Japanese realize okay we this is too risky, we must walk this jungle. But this was also not successful because simply the Japanese they lost a lot of manpower by crossing the mountains. Then later the Australian did this and they suffer more or less exactly the same. But I think the Australian forces was later successful to take Buna. But at that point the Japanese situation was already lost. Because they lost the battle of Tulagi and Guacanal. And so the whole situation was as a breaking point. This was end of 42 or beginning of 43. So normally the Japanese already can say at that moment... It is over. Everything after beginning of 43, latest with the death of Yamamoto, normally the Japanese was only like the Germans, they only, they had, they was proud or they won't defend their honor. 
but there was no lo no real reason what because there was no chance to win this war and for me and for a Japanese player I would simply say you must take Rabul immediately as soon as possible you think can take lay and make out of this also air base because it will normally make sure that from lay you can completely close the street you don't need this you can take lay to close the street it will also have a short range support but I not go this I only take the base nothing more and you can take Wuna and if you say it's too risky to operate here because if the ally player is too active and too skillful then you can really say okay then I try to walk with my units and over the mountains and you try to land here our army but must be off at least a regiment better a division and then you walk all here but I don't ask me how long this needs if you cross this I think it need maybe one month I think you will walk one month <sighs> And yeah, the question is uh, now it is first the beginning of February. In reality, the Japanese try this operation in the beginning of May. So it's still two months. Okay, and here we have still this uh, ongoing cleanup operation. Operation kick the Chinese or let Dojo worry about China or how you want to call it. And you only can see that the mighty Japanese army and this Chinese second class, third class units, uh, it's a one-sided battle. I still waiting, f I think once, only once at this hex the Japanese stopped my advance for one or two turns. It is a, uh, so far, uh, very one-sided operation. You can see roughly 2000 to 3750 and if we calculate this out we can see that the, the because I think this is a heavy mountain so you get a defense bonus you can see Terran plus but uh, looks like the dojo was not uh, in the right um, operation mode. Normally I would say this is impossible uh, I mean, let's see this. No. If you check your units every turn, you normally never have this situation. Because it is impossible. Because I arrived last turn in the same hex. Then I set the attack. Then Do Dojo gets the turn. And Dojo saw that I am in this hex, he, so he will know he, I will attack him. At least there is a potential I will attack him. Means he normally must switch to move uh, to battle order. But of course there is one, there's a, there's a one thinking why he maybe did this. Dojo, the game setup or the game rules are this, you walk first and fight second. So I think Dojo's hope was he don't change the mode. He still have his units in move mode. And he try to move out of the hex in the same turn I attack him. And because move is first, he normally can move out and then my attack will hit nothing. Uh, but uh, then you must make sure that your unit really leaves the hex at the same turn. If you cannot make sure that your units will leave the same turn the hex, then you normally must change your op mode to battle mode. This is the reason, I mean, two options. Dojo hoped he can escape, but he failed, then he make a wrong walking calculations. Or he simply don't care it. This is option two maybe and option three is he forgot to change it. Why well, I mean he he don't care it or he don't check it or he forgot to check it, something like this. Anyway, again we can see we lost five squads, one here, the here and one gun. This is what we really lost and what the industry must rebuild. And this is only disabled, so we give it some supplies and then it's back. And here we can see what Dojo must rebuild much more. 
Ah, okay, this is the uh, Ambon uh, dojo now to try to bomb because it's always an allied bombardment. And we can see that we have more attack value, but we need triple the m because this is, I think, heavy jungle, so we need normally triple the attack value. So I must bring here more. Like I said before, this was simply not enough. I don't expect that there's so much attack value left. Uh -huh. Now, you always learn something. Maybe next time I know, okay, one is, unit is not enough, you must bring two or three units. But uh, where I can get them? It is, the Japanese don't really have a lot of Navy Guard invasion units. So we really must, and for me, Taraka and Bali Papan was much more important than anything else. And these two bases I took easily without any trouble and very fast, at least quickly. Maybe not very fast, but fast enough for me. Because they produce oil and this is important. And they have a meaning because I can install an airbase there. Okay. This is the end of the turn one. So we also take the second base here. So we know we must only get rid of this uh, American force in the jungle. And still clean up mines. So maybe I already have here, I think, a lot of minesweepers, six, seven, but uh, if you can get more there, uh, you can uh, maybe get rid of this mines field faster. But I don't know if it's really necessary because uh, even if I clean the mines uh, faster, it will not change much. The harbor of Manila is not. Mm, I don't need it now because my units are not ready, so I can wait one week. Okay, this is uh, somewhere middle of the ocean. I don't know if you can find it. Here. So you can see this is uh, from Panama. So in this location we found a tanker. It's a big California standard. I think it's a 25 or 30 point tanker, so it's a big one. But uh, too much escort. And uh, we was not lucky. We don't get the uh, attack on the tanker. We try to attack the the support units, but uh, even if you think this support units, it will have no meaning. Normally, the only meaning is the tanker, but our submarine cannot get in position. But we also lost now our submarine, so I would say, yeah, it will scare Dojo. It will still motivate Dojo to run all his heavy value units and big cargo convoys and this slows everything down, burns more fuel and uh, also it's bind a lot of escort ships of his units. Yeah, this is our but this is a very small, shitty destroyer, and this is deep water. I don't think we have much hope here. Uh, we make two hits, but often this kind of hits are two, three damage points, nothing really. You need five or ten hit to really force the submarine go back to port. If you don't get this heavy damage, often it's not enough.
Okay. Then the next cargo ship. I also will not go normally too near to a port, at least five, six, seven hexes, simply because of the if there's enemy scout planes with the uh, submarine hunter order, then he normally, I mean, the range of seven, eight, and then you're normally out of range. If you are ten hexes away, it's impossible to get a normally a strike on the submarine. But also the other reason is. If we now we hit the cargo ship and it's heavy damage, but it's not burning, but it's heavy damage, so normally it's maybe it's very slow. And uh, then maybe the submarine can try to make a second attack. And if it's too near to a base, then there's a risk that you run in escort ships. And also, and even if the ship can maybe escape, but it's heavy damage, it's limp to the port. And it needs maybe many turns. And many turns means that there can always be a failure in the temporary damage control. So maybe the ship is damaged but okay, but after two, three turns it's tried to return to the port. But every turn it gets a little more damage, a little more damage, and maybe shortly before it arrives at the port, it's sunk. Or at least the damage will increase so it needs more time to repair. This is the idea of what I have. Why it makes sense to not try to attack too nearby a port. Bad weather, nothing. Nothing. Ah, uh, yeah, and I think uh, we can check at the end of the turn. But you can see already, it looks like the dojo won't walk out of the nun. So maybe the situation is uh, for Tojo with his losses over time, he don't bear this more and he's, he's desperate to try to escape now. But uh, in this situation normally there is no solution more for this. If he try to escape inside the desert, he will die. If he stay in Yenan, he will die. So it's far too late. Even this is every general normally must be have his mind open. It will never be perfect. Sometimes you have to retreat. And you can always hope for a better day. But hope is a very, 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 very dangerous uh, ally. Because hope always lets you hope and not change something. And if you are cold blood, killer you normally not hope you you have a calculation you do what is necessary to do and sometimes you must run early enough to fight the other day and I will say thank you Jojo because he keep his forces in Yenan and uh, I get rid of them without a big fight I know now I can let them really starve out and I must clean them up more later but this forces will normally be lost. Ah yeah, we kill one I-16 again. I think no flying tigers more left here. I think he really pulled out all flying tigers. And he needs him now in Rangoon, but in Rangoon he was also not very successful. So this whole Flying Tigers legend was a very disappointed chapter. I mean, I would not say for the Japanese it was not a disappointment because it was something we can kill. 
But I think for Dojo it was not really a, a legend. It was only, uh, yeah, they tried but they failed. Now it was I think more like I hope the fighters come first and can reduce the cap not only by killing uh, airplanes also by damage because normally an airplane if it gets damaged then at the same turn it cannot take off more because it normally need overnight repair if it's at least if it's have enough damage. If it's only super mini damage, maybe still can uh, take off the same day. Uh, but also, uh, I think the number of ready airplanes will simply each time there is an airstrike or air battle, it will be less. So if you have normally ten ready cap fighters for the first battle, all ten try to fight, and the next battle only eight are ready. Then only six or four or three. This is why it makes sense. Always try to sweep the airbase before you make the bomber one. And in this second day, it is working. But in the first day, we had this failure, and our commander uh, failed somehow to bring the order and the right, uh, uh, yeah, to let first the fighters sweep and then second, uh, let the bombers attack the airfield. Anyway, anyway. Don't complain, except what is happening. The flying tigers are really... So we get rid of them. And I am fine for this. I only hope that we also get rid of these pilots, because I think maybe... If we can get... Uh, normally these flying tiger pilots are all elite similar to our pilots so the British pilots are also elite I think they're all from the German uh, war uh, European war or African war so all these truck pilots have also a lot of experience but uh, I think Dojo also get a lot of American or other British pilots maybe with less experience so and if we can take out the experience uh, flying tiger pilots and put them in a new airplane then he get uh, very strong fighter force. This is also what I did. You have a lot of good pilots, but with, the, with this Chitty Key 27 at the beginning. So you must normally find the right pilots, put them together in a unit, and give them the 1C Oscar as soon as possible, and then you have something to punish the allies okay two more flying tigers so this is all okay only this first day was very unlucky i would say yeah here we i yeah i still use my carriers to make this uh, attacks simply to make sure that this airport and the port is damaged if the airport and the port is damaged it's impossible for dojo to bring to fly here some stuff in so his units simply staff more out it's something if you won't take the base without much damage you must normally go directly then you have a strong land battle and then you will your army will suffer more uh, but i have really the problem that i have nothing no land units ready here i have only some navy guard units far too less to make a strong attack on Port Moresby on its own. So I must use a lot of airstrikes, bombardment, simply to reduce the defense power of this uh, Port Moresby garrison um, It would be more effective of course to take the carrier to make again uh, the third Australian raid to sink more cargo ships but 
I don't know. Maybe, maybe they will. Maybe this is a for the next time. Maybe use the carrier more to intercept enemy ally shipping, and bring more units here and attack Port Marsby. Maybe not in February. Maybe first in March. Maybe wait with the attack longer. Oh, yeah. But it's a real first game against a, a real uh, play by email before only against a PC and it's something is you must learn and you must you always value stuff different over the time. Yeah, a little damage, a little on the ground, but nothing really enough far. Not enough. So this is our submarine. I think we had already one torpedo hit, and now it's a second again. But still, only heavy damage, no burning. But we get the sinking sound. So for this very high possibility, the justice cargo ship uh, lost. This is some bombardment. Here's an air base. Similar to our bomb. So they're nice locations to normally scout and make sure that there's nothing in the area. Uh, but uh, yeah, normally this destroyer or light cruiser formations are they can hurt, but just so so. I will not use them too much for bombardment. But if they have nothing to do, it's a question what you else you want to do with this kind of ships. Japanese light cruisers, they have normally not the fighting power. You can use them to try to intercept some cargo shipping, I would say. Scouting, support, but uh, they're not really battleships. Or I mean, ships for real navy engagement. Okay. So this is now the end of the turn. So now we are at 9th February 1942. And we can first check the situation. So our air losses was uh, Air to air, not so terrible, but we had a lot of operational losses. This is, yeah. So many of our airplanes return to base and then are crashed and then written off. So we can see this we have uh, the key 21, 7 lost in air battle and 2 operational losses. So our Oscars also 6 air battle losses and 2 operational losses. We also kill six hurricanes. The hurricanes are really the better one, but we kill only two in air to air. But we, yeah, we damage them so heavily that they are written off. We also had uh, five torpedo bombers. Uh, I think by flag from Port Moresby. Damage took two, but we also kill five flying tigers. So we can see. And other first class fighter. No, I do five flying tigers and six hurricanes. So Dojo last lost eleven first class fighter. 
and uh, I lost uh, eight in one year. Nine. So if you only care now fighters, we still had a successful day because if I only care fighters, then I would say Dojo lost more. But if you see then the pilot, then I would say uh, not so much. And if we see the bomber losses, nine bombers here, five bombers from the torpedo bomber, and uh, a lot of smaller stuff mostly in China. So in the end is a 16 to 31. Of course, this was not a good day. It was a... Uh, no, it was not a good day, but... Uh, uh, I mean, this in China is normally not to avoid. And six lost airplanes by operationals in two days. And uh, don't forget, it's two, it's two days. Is I would simply normal. And... Uh, yeah, the biggest problem is only these losses of the 10 bombers. If you deduct 10 bombers here and say it's 16 to 21, then I would say it's it's okay. Now it's a little high, but... Uh, oh, not this one. This one. So we can see we, we lost four pilots in Rangoon. This are the pilots return to the airbase but they get wounded but after time normally they can return to service and we have 12 official killed pilots and uh, if you want now you can go to this op operational reports and normally then you can get additional information about uh, uh, here you can see this bomber they crashed on the landing and this normally then it's a lost airplane this is also, it's damaged on landing, but it's not destroyed. But it gets, I think, additional damage. Uh, then you get, uh, he gets killed because he do so. And then you can normally find this out. You can see a little more why, what happened and uh, which guy. Not You cannot find here everything, but um, additional information. But normally I don't read this. Only very, not... So only if I really are uh, about something curiously and I don't know why something happened. Yeah, yeah, this is from the torpedo bomber. There's a torpedo bomber. He returned to the base from uh, from Soyu, and he make a crash landing, and then the pilot also gets killed. This is one of the dead pilots. Here's a other torpedo bomber from Soyu, also from the same group. He also make a crash landing, but the pilot is fine, but the airplane is lost. And this is also the zero. Also make a crash landing. The pilot is okay, but the plane is lost. This is simply can happen. Carrier-based air forces simply suffer much more of this stuff. But it's part of the game. Part is a war. Okay. Ah, yeah. And we can check if we sunk something. Official. Official, we sunk this one cargo ship. Five and a half thousand ton cargo capacity, long range. So it's a good, it's a good cargo ship. Nothing crazy, but a good one. Oh, it's okay. Is this enough normally? No, I would say normally we must sink two or three of this kind of ships every turn to balance out. But yeah. So. You can see now here, uh, you can see that some forces, if you see this, you only can see, I mean, I know 12 units are here in Yenan, and I know that one unit at least tried to escape to the west. And I can also see that Dojo tried to bring two units, or at least one of these two units, over the river inside Yenan. And I normally will now wait and see how many units I will need. He move out of Yenan. If you take all units out, I will take Yenan. Uh, if you only take one unit out, then I maybe try to intercept this one unit and starve again Dojo. But we will see what happened here. Here we still try to get here, uh, still 45,000 units. We, I think I organize now here. You can see I walk here east and I walk maybe here also east or north or south. I try to get this and get rid of them. 
and uh, here's this big army with the 200,000 guys so I also I must balance this out to get rid of them try to get this two units I think this is only 10,000 or something and make sure that this 200,000 not escaping this is a big fish this is a big fish this is normally not so important and uh, this is a uh, must clean up but they are already damaged and no more fighting force but you must get rid of them uh, you can see here I walk now here's a small street but this will need long time we arrive this base so we will walk here and then we check the situation you can see, see so far that he's not much but uh, the scout information are a little old I think so I don't know more really what is here but you can see small numbers only Important is that uh, we always scout this city because uh, Ai Shang, if he keep here 200,000, he can keep them, I don't care. He can keep the city f to the end of the end war, war. There's nothing really I need here. And uh, for him it's always hard to maintain his forces. So I think they always will suffer shortage of supplies. I also only care that he, that I see how many forces he have here, so if he has 200,000 and he has maybe 200,000, these are two, well, 400, 500,000 guys blocked and locked here. And if he have this strong center, I will go north and source and ignore the center. But I must make sure that I know that this forces uh, he is still in position, not that he is moving the units away. If he move away, then I must change my strategy. But so long I know where is his focus point, I can try to outmaneuver his units. And if he say strong center, I will say I flank him. If he try to balance, then I must find one focus point where I crash him. Of course, I mean, if everything is balanced, I would maybe go in the center because of the center it is the shortest way to go to, uh, to first there is industry potential here and it's shorter for me to cut. If I can cut here this line, then all this is trapped. If I go here source, then he still has this uh, other roads. I will not trap this units if I go here. So this is strategic thinking. Yeah, the airbase, we have here high detection, always make sure that you have high detection. Normally there's only six fighters left, so he bring new fighters, we get rid of the fighters, but we also lost a lot of our bombers, so this unit is not so damaged. This unit, uh, this is a bomber force, we just lost, I think, yeah, the question is, I don't know how many I lost before, but we have now 7 killed air to air and we can see we start with 27 and we are now down to 90. So we are missing 8 airplanes and these are maybe the 7 plus 1, I don't know. This is also, uh, keep in mind that this is an airfield of 5. So I only can operate 250 airplanes out of this active. So this was also the reason why I cannot bring so many bomber forces here. I still have the focus for fighter. I sent more or less 80% fighter and 27% bombers. Uh, if I know there is no fighter left or only one or two, then I maybe can say 20% fighters and 80% bombers. But even this is only the percentage. The next is really the maximum number of airplanes I can send out. And I am still so far limited to maximum 250 airplanes can fly out to strike and you this 250s are not all attack I still have here recon and training even training will at least I can do this because it's an old file I mean no one uses more if I go now everything on stand down I can try this now send all fighters of stand down and this also all stand down so now, and we can also go all on stand down. So now every airplane is here in stand down normal. You can see training on zero means they are not active. And even now, 
Oops. I have this 134 on base because simply I think because there are airplanes maybe because of maintenance or other stuff so I only have 120 airplanes I can operate here out of this air base to attack Ringo it's not that I have this 250 completely free to use or I can attack with much more bombers so keep this in mind uh, that you always check these numbers simply to have less operational losses or bad uh, uh, or yeah, bad combination of forces like now. This was a little unlucky because you can see the rest is all fine. They're all part of the third army HQ. Yeah, you cannot really do more. This is the best. Have the headquarter here in the same packs. Have them together. And then try and hope. Good. Uh, Singapore. Uh, yeah, I really realize this. The, the damage of Singapore in the long run was really terrible for me. It really slows down a lot of stuff for me. Simply because it burns a lot of supplies. And it will also reduce the efficiency of all of the uh, port uh, shipping stuff. And I also would say now, uh, I mean, I read it before and I think about this before and I thought it's a little gamey. But if you play the Japanese and you have a touch, or a, 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 I say a tough battle with your with the ally player and you will not win easily or, I mean, if you really think it's a challenge, I really would go to industry and if you, I would say all manpower, if there's something damaged like this one, I would say no, I don't want to repair. I would go to a light industry and I would check every base if there's anything to repair. Like here, Xi'an, don't repair. Don't repair. And uh, Hong Kong, light industry, don't repair. Because keep in mind, one industry to repair we can go to Hong Kong we can go for light industry Oops, this one light industry if we have this on on repair one point is 1000 supplies one light industry will produce one supply per turn you have the investment of 1000 supplies means it will need 1000 days to pay back what you invested so now you can say roughly 1000 days let's say it's two and a half years it's normally more but let's say it's it's you can or you can say normally you will say it's more three not completely three years but more than in worst case let's say it's three years so then you can make sure that you, the, the return of your investment is first at if you start of December 41 then it's December 42 December 43 December 44 so maybe let's say October 44 you get your investment back October 44 you first get back what you paid here then you have only one year left to get any profit out of this investment. And this is simply, I would say, for light industry, really, that is too late, too little. And it makes no sense that you burn. And I really have the problem now in, the, in my ongoing game that I really must check every damn base where I have supplies left. Because I have many bases, whereas normally at the beginning I left some surprise, uh, supply. supply supplies left uh, because I had no time to ship it all perfectly and now I must really find all this le lot, mm, leftover stuff to keep my industry and my army running it's I cannot produce enough supplies to uh, really pay for all of this and if you more or less <coughs> from the beginning say you don't must repair manpower because manpower is never an issue Forget manpower because you have enough. 
Light industry is uh, the point of return of your investment is far too late. It's make no sense. So also light industry don't care. Also resources. I would say no. You have normally enough resources. You can discuss this maybe, but I would say no. Oil is also a question. Hard to say, depending on how long the war go on. But I would say also normally not necessary. So you can say manpower don't repair, light industry don't repair, resources don't repair, oil don't repair. What you must repair is heavy industry, what you must repair is refinery. That for sure. And armament and vehicle, uh, I think, uh, I don't even know if you really can capture this or it's only in Japan. I would also say repair, repair. Uh, and yeah, But uh, manpower, light industry, on oil resources, don't repair it if you play the Japanese. Saves the supplies. Better, I also would say, early in the war, try to get the mainland. This is the mainland. Try wherever you can find heavy industry. You don't must uh, upgrade the heavy industry with 100. You can say upgrade 10. And then after one or two weeks, you check again and say, okay, upgrade again with 10. But I would, I would say the first two or three months, Try to upgrade what is possible, maybe in, in Japan and also in Manchuku, what you control here, and get fast your heavy industry up, because you can only get one industry per base per ter per day. Then you have a you invest still one thousand supplies, but you get two supplies back for each turn. So you, after one and a half years, you have already your investment back. And this is the other calculation. But you also, this also means normally if you reach maybe mid of 42, you better don't increase any heavy industry more. Because at that point is even it's also too late. Because the time frame or the time window left for you to get profit out of your investment gets shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. Okay, this is only because I just realized this in, the, in my actual turn and we are now just in the beginning of March and I, I, this is really, it's a combination how much supplies you burn with your air of war and how heavily you invest in stuff. And uh, you cannot do everything like with the Americans. The Americans, they can do everything. They never run out of supplies, but with the Japanese, you will run out of supplies. Okay, the more interesting part now, maybe for many players, is now here. Here is the carrier fleet. Support heavy cruiser formation. Uh, also destroyer formation. And there is also, I think, I sent out a battle fleet uh, formation and the second cru uh, heavy cruiser formation next turn. And this is some invasion force going for Saban. So I have here this carrier strike forces now in this turn, so next turn we are more or less here. And then he, up to here we can go normally without any problem, And but the critical point will be next next turn if we can find a way past the Maldives islands without detection if we get detection we must attack Colombo like before if we don't get the detection I try to sneak up and make this surprise attack on Bombay and uh, uh, make sure if we have your carriers that if you create this kind of forces, you can make this auto commander choice or you choose the commander by yourself and pay for this. But I would always say it is 90% better to have always a vice admiral command your forces. Because if you don't choose the admiral, then you always one of the captains will be automatically also the task force leader. 
I don't know if there's some handicap big with this because normally if a captain is also the admiral, it's a double burden. You cannot command a ship and at the same time a fleet and not suffer efficiency. So this guy, the admiral, will always make care of overall fleet operations and the captain can focus for his ship. Uh, but often also admirals have better skills points than their captain. So I would say why not. And uh, now maybe not so important. I also have them all on training my forces. And I will keep this normally. I always try to make training if there is no battle. And, or if I don't expect much. Simply to get my skills up. And also if you come close to the airbase. You better keep your. I will make some cap of course. But I keep them very short range. Maybe one or one, uh, one or a zero because uh, I don't get one thing that my airplanes go out much but I will just explain maybe next turn because then we are more in the um, situation so everything else is still uh, we are here now and uh, my forces are back and resting and they're preparing here for the invasion this will come soon we try to land and take this port And uh, we are hunting here like crazy. I can use the uh, no, not the set key. The six key six. So not five, not seven. It's a six. If you push the six, you can see your um, patrol areas. So this is patrol. This is not a task force line. So if a task force is running to a base, it's not part of this. It is only patrol area. Uh, so I think we will uh, yeah and one other stuff this will happen in the next uh, next episodes uh, in lay I would keep a mini force I have here now this mini forces and uh, keep in mind if you if you have a force without uh, if you have a base without a force inside it's an empty force and then the things can happen, like if there's an enemy unit nearby, the game calculate if the force, the, this nearby enemy, have a influence of this area, and then sometimes the bases can switch without attacking the base. I think this will happen here soon. I will maybe fight here, and then the base will, at the same time the base will switch, because somehow the game calculate, okay, this Australian forces, uh, are here and they have some aura and because they have some attack value and then this big base will switch and then this switch and this switch and then switch and go around and it's a little strange I don't like this system but uh, uh, sometimes they support you and sometimes it's uh, mess up with your stuff so if the uh, it helps to simply have at least any unit in a base to make sure it cannot switch more if it's completely empty then this always can happen Okay, uh, yeah, more I don't have to say here, we bombed here this uh, airport, there's not more much left, we damage it, so we will, Dojo will start to burn supplies, and we normally try to organize uh, this Navy Guard units to attack uh, Rabul, uh, Port Mosby, but I really have only these four units. And uh, I have here two more. I can norm I normally had to bring these units faster to Rabul and then bring with more forces here. But at that time or now I try first with four and see how it works out. The capacity is still uh, there's never enough. And like I said before, for me is the focus Philippines. And uh, Malaya, and after this is the focus Java and Sumatra. Okay, what I can tell you more, I think this is first enough. And then the last thing about uh, the chips, uh, 
you can use the tracker software and then you can go to ships and then you can go classes because I have uh, how do describe this the best the Japanese have destroyers but they have an issue with submarine hunter equipment and uh, let's find destroyers uh, no I think you don't must go to ships ships class navy destroyers Like this, and uh, here you can see this is a this is not good tool normally. You can see ship classes. Then you can see then you can uh, check for what kind of ships. I focus now for destroyers because I think they are the most important for this issue. And then you can see what type of ship, what class it is. Maybe must go a little up. This is enough. Then you can see the information and uh, how many ships you have already active in duty or if they are coming if it's like uh, here you can see three ships of this class are active and four or more coming there in production and uh, you also can see this is a class this is a Momo class there's only one class of this destroyer level Momo this is a Mumi. We have now eight ships of this. Then you can see here the upgrade is to 83. So this is a Momo Mumi class, the next level. Uh, and then you can see that this ship will upgrade to 84. But here is no 84 more. This is a little a handicap. It would be nice if there is a link what type of ship it will upgrade but this Mumi will upgrade to a escort ship so if we go to remember the 1384 escort is here 1384 then we can find here the Mumi again so this is the next upgrade and this will upgrade to 85 and then it's over this upgrade can happen in September 44. This upgrade can happen in April 43. Only to understand this system, how it works first. This is a, to understand this. How I can see and how I can find the order of upgrades for ships. Because sometimes in the game it's not clear, you cannot see too deep in information. The tracker can show you every way and every upgrade possible only that is sometimes not showing where it's go you only see here's a destroyer Momo you know it's the upgrade but you don't know where it's going that is a little handicap but normally a destroyer can only change to a escort or APD I think there's no real other option so and uh, sometimes like this Momo you only have this chance to can upgrade. Okay, there, there's no choice. So you upgrade yes or no. This is your only choice. So this is simple. Of course you will upgrade. I don't that this we don't must discuss. Then you have this often with the Japanese destroyers. You have this upgrade. This is one option. Or you are, you can convert it. This is a the other option. So this is option A, this is option B. A upgrade or a conversion. The, the problem is that uh, often uh, then it's really changed the upgrade path. So here you can choose. If I go to 83 or if I reach the 83 then I cannot cho choose more to go to APD. So it's also if you want more of these, these are fast transport destroyers. Troop transport destroyers. We can, uh, I can go a little more up. Uh, here, capacity of troops, cargo, and liquid. So you cannot transport liquid, but you can transport cargo or troops with this D 
destroyer. This is a normal destroyer configuration. And it's keep like this. If you go to APD, these numbers will change. The whole setup of the ship will change. I would only point out that sometimes you have no choice, you have only this. Sometimes you can choose, but only at this position you can choose. With this kind of ship, you can choose between this or this, so A or B. And if you choose the A option, then later you cannot change more to A, B, D. Then it's over. This is a little strange why I, normally I would say I can always go to A, P, D, but in this game, no. There's, this is fixed rules. This is the next point. And if you want APDs or not, I don't want to discuss because I think this is up to the personal level. What I can say is, out of all of the Japanese destroyers you have, or coming, there are two types of destroyers. I would say it makes sense to change them to APD. And uh, let me check again because I, I make a picture because I, oh, I normally you can write it down. Minkanze in Kamikaze. Genau. Minkanze and Kamikaze. Uh, I think I missed it. Yeah, Kamikaze. These two destroyers, I would say, it makes sense to upgrade them as early as possible to the APD. So, this is a Minkanze, and normally, I would say, because you start with these ships, you can upgrade them to, uh, to this ship early on, but I would say, don't do this. I did this. But I think I uh, it make not really sense. You can check this upgrade pass and then you can see something. Because you can say, okay, this is my original set uh, destroyer. Okay, it's a shitty small destroyer, one and a half thousand ton. First World War destroyer. You upgrade this, then you get the additional, uh, you get a little equipment, but nothing crazy good. I mean, yeah. This is in February of 42. You must always keep in mind what time it is. Then the next upgrade, it is September 43. You get a radar. If radar is nice. It's okay. And more my god. Uh, but uh, I would say more important is also for the anti-submarine equipment. And you can see here, this is the most important is, you can see here the depth shaders, and this is the range, means if you, these numbers are wrong. So you have here 175 feet. And roughly I would say a submarine can dive, the American submarines, they can dive maybe 250 feet or like this. So this is the reason why this, and I think shallow water is, maybe something with 150 feet so this submarines can attack a submarine in shallow water because it only will go to 150 feet but for deep water it will not be enough a submarine can go deeper 200 250 maybe so and then you must check the time so then okay then you can say this destroyer have some radar but still cannot attack deep water submarines so now we are 444, then you get this next, this is a, a, a better equipment, now you can see 375, so it means no submarine can dive so deep. So you can, wherever the submarine is, this sub destroyer can at least hit the submarine. It not means automatically you will hit the submarine, but you can. So, and this is the time frame. So I can use this destroyer against submarines in deep water first in April 44. This is a Minkanze. And the Kamikaze is very similar. Similar layout. Also you can see it's the same one and a half thousand. 
You get this early upgrade, but you can go to APD. You can go APD immediately normally. Better go for this. Don't upgrade at least. Because and then you can see here 343. I still have this shitty submarine equipment. And in 444, I get the equipment. So April 44, these destroyers are fine. These two classes are like this. You first get them ready for anti-submarine equipment in 444. The other option is now say, okay, kamikaze, minkanze, why I don't change them to APD? Then let's check APD. APD is somewhere here. Uh, too far away. APD. So we go to minkanze APD. This is the APD. After you upgrade the ship immediately to APD, you get this ship. And I would say, hmm, looks very similar nothing better first you can see already that you can now not load 75 you can already load 250 and more cargo because they are half cargo ships would say okay this i understand of course the downside is you have normally i think less firepower they are a little slower so they are cargo ships uh, but with destroyer function then the next okay there's an upgrade aha so 8 of 42 I can upgrade this ship to the APD level 2 and I get already at uh, August oh, yeah August 42 I get already radar and I get death chargers can go to 275 this is normally enough to attack deep water they also have more firepower I would say but I'm not more sure if they really make more damage or only go deeper. But at least they go deeper so you can attack deep water. So this destroyer is ready for deep water anti-submarine activity and have radar already in August 42. Not bad. And this is not the end. And then you can see there's no second, there's no more upgrade. But there's a conversion to the E-class. Oh, then you can say Minkanze E class. Okay, let's go to E. Minkanze. Uh, Minkanze E class. This is the upgrade. It first of February, no January forty three. It is beginning of forty three. Now I have a lot of anti-submarine equipment, so it's a very similar ship, I would say, but a little more focus. You can see that the capacity for troop transport go down again, because now the focus is escort. It's an escort ship, focus for escort, cargo, troop transport, tanker, like this. But you can also use them for hunt submarines. And you can see you have a lot of this anti-submarine stuff. And normally you also have a lot of more firepower, air, anti-aircraft firepower. But you still have radar. I would simply say it is a soft upgrade. It gives you a little more anti-submarine equipment, but it's not a big deal, I would say. And then in 5, uh, 544, you get this. Then you are more like back where you finish with the destroyers. So this is only one month's difference, so I would say this is the same. At the end, the destroyer and the escort, the Mikanze, you start at the same point and you end at the same point. Here you have, I think, more anti-submarine equipment, but a little less uh, uh, firepower, surface firepower. But the question is more or less how early I get this equipment. And for the Mikanze and the Mikaze, it is simply better to go for APD. And for the other destroyers, you can better go only keep destroyer up to the end or there's normally an option that sometimes you can change from the destroyer to an escort ship but don't i don't i don't go to apd but this is my personal meaning that i would say if i would play the japanese again these two destroyer classes minkanze and kamikaze i would at the beginning of the game after the first week maybe after i use them after i can spare them i would say change them to apd immediately upgrade the first apd to the next level of apd and then i have radar 
because we can uh, check this only again to make sure oops no uh, APD APD Minkanze Kamikaze here's the same this is a kamikaze, looks first okay. I can get this already immediately at the first turn. And here is end of 42. I get radar and anti submarine equipment. This is deep water and radar. It is not so good like the Minkanze, but still better. Okay, and this is now the end because I think this is uh, only a topic. There's also other stuff we can discuss, but I would say. These two destroyers change to APD at the early it's possible and uh, you get a benefit out of this. So I wish you all the best. See you again. Take care. Bye bye.